Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Apple Monitor here, and it's been a very long time. I just uploaded a video on App Review. If you want to go check that out, please subscribe to my channel up above and like this video if you like it at the end. So now let's get started. <laughs> Point of this video is to talk about some iPhone 5 or new iPhone rumors because obviously they call the iPad 3 the new iPad. I mean, that makes sense. They can't go up to like iPhone 9, iPhone 10, iPhone 11. It just gets kind of stupid at some point. The reason they put the new is just so people knew it's the new iPhone, not just like the first iPhone or first iPad. Kind of makes sense, I guess. It's just going to kind of take some getting used to. So basically, the first rumor I have for you guys is a bigger screen. As you guys know, this iPhone is the 4S. The screen is super, super, super small. It's 3.5 inches. Like, I can barely even kind of just move my fingers on this. I do have a Windows phone, which is about 4, 4.3 inches. I don't know where that is right now, but it's a lot bigger. And it's not too big that it's like a hassle, but it's big enough just so you can see everything perfectly and use it flawlessly. I really hope they increase the size. The most probable size it's going to be is about 4 inches. The only downfall to that is that app developers are going to have to adjust their apps to fit that resolution. Even though apps on the App Store are made to fit any resolution like they did with the iPad, it's not going to look as good good unless a developer actually makes it like that but obviously any Apple product all developers are going to jump on it and want to make it as good as possible next hopefully there is a new design the design right now for the iPhone 4s and iPhone 4 is this glass back design I'm trying to get my phone out so I can show it to you guys right now it's this glass back I have a little case on it so you can't really tell but it's glass so if I slam it on my desk it will probably break if I didn't have the cover on it. But yeah, they have a lot of problems having to replace those, so I really think, and I really hope they do make an all metal casing. People are saying it might be liquid metal. Liquid metal is sort of a thing that you melt down this metal substance to liquid stage, then you put it in a mold, and then it kind of hardens back into that stage. Apple is saying that they do not have the technology to be able to do that on a large scale at this point, but they did recently acquire a company that does specialize in doing so. So hopefully we will see that down the road, maybe in the iPhone 6 or 7 or 8 and so on. So that would be really cool if we do get a metal design. Also, NFC technology is a very big possibility. NFC stands for Near Field Communications. What Near Field Communications does is allow you to pretty much use your phone as a credit card. So you can program pretty much your credit card info onto your phone. So when you go to a store, you can just like put it up close to the little uh, scanner or not scanner, just like a little ATM thing. And then it gets the info and it pays like that. So you pretty much don't have to have your credit card anywhere. Google is kind of trying to do this with Android because a lot of Android phones do support this NFC technology technology and that is with Google Wallet and that is actually doing really well. The only problem is we're just hoping that some companies will adopt it so that it becomes more common throughout the world. A hint of this I was seeing in the WWDC 2012 was the Passbook that was announced for iOS 6. Basically it does similar thing except instead of actually programming it scans it. So in my opinion it kind of alludes to the NFC technology because Passbook is pretty much like a dumbed down version of NFC. If you want to know more about Passbook, you can just look it up on Google or something. The next thing I think that iPhone 5 was going to have, or new iPhone, is probably better RAM. It was really disappointing to see that from the iPhone 4 to the iPhone 4S. Apple did actually not upgrade the RAM. It went from 512 megabytes in the iPhone 4 and remained at 512 megabytes in the iPhone 4S. People were expecting to go up to a gig just to compete with some Android and Windows phones, but they did not do that and nor did they advertise it. So hopefully Hopefully that does go up. Also, better battery life. I don't know about you iPhone 4S users, but the battery life on this baby sucks. That is the one downfall I have with this phone. I've been meaning to go to the Apple store to get a new one just so the battery's better. Hopefully something happens. Software updates don't do crap. This iPhone is really bad battery. I can barely make it through a full day of school with it. It's really a hassle. The main reason behind this, in my opinion, is that from the last iPhone that was single core, this new iPhone 4S was dual core, yet they only expanded the battery by 0 0.05 milliamp hours. Just to give you a scale of that magnitude, Usually phones are 1800 to 2000 milliamp hours like the Android phones and stuff so 0 0.05 milliamp hours is basically nothing so I don't even know what they were thinking obviously if you're going to go from one core to two cores it's going to require more energy to work so that's pretty much their major downfall. Also a lot of people are saying that this dock connector right here on this iPhone is going to be made smaller to accommodate the thinner and new sleeker design. The only problem I see with this is throughout Apple's career all of their iPhones, all their iPods, all their iPads, all their iPods 
iPod Touches had the same USB dock connector. I always see, even my dad who got the very, very, very first iPod that came out like 80s or 90s or whatever the hell it was, he had this cord that even still fits in my iPhone today. So if I can't find a cord, I just use whatever one I can find. The bad part about the new dock connector is it's not going to be compatible with these old dock connectors. So it's going to be specific to the new iPhone, which kind of ruins the whole thing that they've had. Now when you have an iHome that you use for your iPhone 4, then you upgrade to iPhone 5 it's not gonna work and you're gonna have to buy a whole new iHome or maybe they'll make like some adapter, but overall it's just a hassle. Also, we were pretty much counting on seeing 4G LTE speeds for the iPhone 5 for both AT&T and Verizon and possibly Sprint as well. I'm not sure Sprint supports LTE currently, but I imagine that they will or already do. But Verizon and AT&T surely do. AT&T is kind of getting in the market, but they're going to have to compete with Verizon at some point. So I think this is going to be a good milestone for them. 4G LTE speeds will allow you to use your iPhone, I think about 20 megabytes per second theoretical, usually actual for Verizon, but AT&T's tend to be slightly slower. A big hint of this was actually the iPad 3, which announced in 4G LTE with Verizon. And I do think that is a major indication that the iPhone 5 will also have 4G. Also, another indication was in the WWDC conference, they announced 4G over the the air will kind of over the air but not over Wi-Fi but in cellular connection this kind of means that they're getting ready for a faster launch of cellular connection in my opinion also obviously it's going to be running iOS 6 which is not out yet but the beta 1 is out for developers you can get that if you pay $100 a year to Apple but I would just wait until iOS 6 comes out probably not going to be too long I'm hoping they do release it before the iPhone 5 does come out because I really want to get it for my 4s and that's going to be a really long ways down that's what I'm going to talk about next actually the release date for the iPhone 5 so basically this iPhone 4s came out on October 14th I believe and pre-orders were made available October 7th. I can't remember right, but somewhere around there since they didn't announce the iPhone 5 at WWDC Which was this Monday I am almost certain that they're gonna probably announce it around September and release it around the same October time frame I know this sucks for a lot of us, but we just have to wait for some reason they decided to change this release cycle I think what they're doing now is announcing Macs and all that stuff at the beginning of summer and then the end of summer slash beginning of fall They're gonna announce the iPhones iPod touch and then iPad is in the winter and then ITV who knows if that even comes so yeah guys that's pretty much it i hope you liked this video if you liked it please subscribe up above like this video down there just leave me a comment down below on what you think needs improvement or if you want to see this kind of videos again or you want to see more app reviews like i did in the last video so yeah i hope these iphone 5 rumors do actually come true because these are the ones i compile that are the most likely there are some that are just abstract so yeah these are the ones that are the most likely so i hope you guys enjoyed and ultimately have a nice day